Hello, um, today we're going to be looking at our lesson 1C for unit 10. We're going to be looking at um, trig ratios and we're going to have to use the Pythagorean theorem today. So our objective says I can find a sine, cosine, and tangent ratios of an acute angle and a right triangle. Um, but we're going to have one missing side today and we're going to have to use the Pythagorean theorem um, so just as a review for prior knowledge, um, I forgot to remove this from the screen, but it's okay. Um, just a review for prior knowledge. Whenever we have a right triangle and we have a missing side, we're going to have to use the Pythagorean theorem. And so if you remember, across the 90 degree angle is always going to be our hypotenuse. And our hypotenuse in the Pythagorean theorem is our C value. So if you remember, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. In a Pythagorean theorem, um, C is always the hypotenuse, and then we have our legs A and B. And so A is missing here, and B is our 7. And remember, A and B can, can be switched. So you can say that our missing side is B and 7 is A. That doesn't really matter too much. Um, so then here I have side A squared plus my B is 7 squared um, is equal to C squared. Um, sorry, I would like to color coordinate my legs, 7 squared, and the hypotenuse in blue is the 25 squared. And so we can see, um, that 7 squared is going to be 49, and then our 25 squared is going to be 625, and then you check to see whether you subtract these two numbers or you add them. Um, but because they are on opposite sides, we're going to have to subtract them. Um, so if we subtract 49 to each side, we end up with a squared is equal to 576. And then we have to take the square root of each side to get rid of the squared. So my a value is going to be 24. So now I know that my missing side over here is 24 in the triangle. Um, and so in order for us to do sine, cosine, and tangent, we need to have all three sides. And so for today's exercises, we're going to see a triangle like this where it has two sides and it has a missing side. So we're going to have to first do the Pythagorean theorem and then we can use a sine, cosine, and tangent. Um, so this is our like lesson 1a, 10-1a, when we use the Pythagorean theorem. And then the 1b was using the sine, cosine, and tangent, what all three sides were given. And so today is like a mix of lessons 1a and 1b. For concept, just a review, labeling the sides. Remember, hypotenuse is always the side across from the right angle. So I can see my right angle. Across from the right angle is the hypotenuse. And then we have the side opposite is the side across from the angle of reference. So like an angle A is here, my angle A. So the side directly across from it is the opposite side, would be this side. Um, and then we have... The side adjacent is the side next to the angle that's not the hypotenuse. So I can see the adjacent side is here because it's right next to angle A. Um, but this is the hypotenuse, so this side over here would be the adjacent side. And again, that's just a review for what we did for lesson 1B. Um, and then again, just to review, we have the trig ratios, the sine, cosine, and tangent. So sine of A is the opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. And to remember, we have SOHCAHTOA. Um, but I personally like to write it as a fraction. So SOHCA and then TOA is opposite over adjacent. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. So let's go ahead and look at our first example here. Um, so if you see, it says find the following, and then it says simplify if possible. So I want to see what I have given. So I have, um, first of all, you want to label your sides like we did yes, or for lesson 1b. Starting with the right angle, across from the right angle, that's going to be my hypotenuse. And then I need to figure out what's my angle of reference. So notice all of these are asking for A. 
sine of a, cosine of a, tangent of a. So my angle of reference is going to be angle a. Which means then directly across from angle a is going to be the opposite side. And then the one next to angle a is the adjacent side. So 12 was the adjacent side, 9 is the opposite side, and notice I don't have a hypotenuse side yet. And so because I don't know what this is yet, I have to use the Pythagorean theorem. So my Pythagorean theorem again is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And if you recall, the c is our hypotenuse, and so I'm missing a c, and then 9 and 12 could be our a and our b, and it doesn't matter really which one is which. Um, so I'm going to zoom in a little bit here so I have more space to work. Um, I have a 9 squared plus a 12 squared. It's going to equal C squared. And so 9 squared I know is 81 plus 12 squared is 144. It's going to equal C squared. And then 144 plus 81 is going to be, um... 225 is going to be my c squared. And 225 is actually a perfect square. So 225, the square root of 225, is actually 15. So c is going to be 15. So now I know that my hypotenuse side is going to be 15. Okay, so now that I have my three sides given to me, um, now I can go do sine, cosine, and tangent. So, yes, our, for lesson 1b, we did not have, I mean, we had all three sides, so we didn't have to do this extra Pythagorean theorem part. Um, but for lesson 1c, we're missing one of the sides, so we have to do Pythagorean theorem. So, if you recall, sine is so, we have opposite over hypotenuse. And then cosine is ka, adjacent over hypotenuse. And then tangent is toa, is opposite over adjacent. And so now I can do my um, trig ratios here. So sine of a, I want to look for the opposite side, which is 9, over the hypotenuse, which is 15. So I would do 9 over 15, but then I need to simplify. So I can reduce. This time, notice, um, they're not even, so I can't reduce by 2. But I know 3 goes into both of them, so reduce by 3 this time. So 9 divided by 3 is 3, and 15 divided by 3 is 5. Moving on now to cosine is ka, so that's adjacent over hypotenuse. So my adjacent side is 12, the hypotenuse side is um, 15. So I have 12 over 15, and again I can reduce by 3. So 12 divided by 3 is 4. And 15 divided by 3 is 5. That leaves us with tangent. Tangent is toa. So this is the opposite over the adjacent side. So opposite over adjacent is going to be 9 over 12. And again, I can reduce by 3. 9 divided by 3 is 3. And 12 divided by 3 is 4. So I have 3 fifths, 4 fifths, and 3 fourths. So again, one more time, you're going to have a missing side today. Um, and so to find the missing side, you're going to have to do the Pythagorean theorem. Once you do the Pythagorean theorem, then you have all three sides. And then you can do sine, cosine, and tangent um, using Sokotoa. All right, let's look at our next example. So in this next example, um, we have um, side CB is 2 and then side DB is 4. And then we're missing the other side over there. Um, so first, again, we want to figure out which side is which. So across the 90 is the hypotenuse side. And then what angle are we looking at? We're angle D here. So angle D is over here. So I'm going to put my little arc so I know that's the angle we're looking at. So directly across from the angle is the opposite side. And then we are actually missing the adjacent side this time. So again, you have to do the Pythagorean theorem um, in order to use the or to find the missing side. So I have a, a squared plus b squared is going to equal my c squared. Um, and so remember, the hypotenuse is the c, 
and then A and B doesn't really matter which one you call which. Um, but I'm going to go A squared plus my B. I'm going to call it 2. So 2 squared is equal to C, which is 4 squared. Um, and then solve for A. So A squared plus 2 squared is 4. And 4 squared is 16. And then I can subtract 4 to each side. We get A squared is equal to 16 minus 4 is 12. And then take the square root of each side. And then remember here is when we are trying to find a perfect square that goes into 12. So my perfect squares are 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, and so forth. But these are the only ones that are smaller than 12. So which of these goes into 12? I know 4 goes into 12. So square root of 12 can be split into the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. And then the square root of 4... I know this is going to be a whole number. This is going to be 2. Square root of 4 is 2 because 2 times 2 is 4. And then root 3, there is no perfect square root of 3. So we leave it as 2 square root 3. And then bring this down. The square root cancels the squared. So we're left with a is equal to 2 root 3. So now I know that my missing side, the adjacent side, is 2 times the square root of 3. Okay, um, so now that I have my three sides, now I can go to Sokotoa. So sine is the opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is ka, adjacent over hypotenuse, and then tangent is toa, opposite over adjacent. So my opposite side, I see is 2, and the hypotenuse side is 4. So this is going to be 2 over 4. Um, but here I can reduce by 2. Uh, reduce by 2. They're both even. So 2 divided by 2 is 1 and 4 divided by 2 is 2. And then cosine is ka. So the adjacent side I see is 2 times the square root of 3 over the hypotenuse side which is 4. Um, and then for that one, notice I have the fraction, the 2 and the 4. So I can reduce um, I can reduce by 2 in this case. Um, so 2 divided by 2 is 1. So I'm just going to be left with the square root of 3. And 4 divided by 2 is going to be 2. And then for tangent is toa. So the opposite side is 2. And the adjacent side is 2 times the square root of 3. Um, in this case, notice I have a fraction here again. So I want to first reduce by 2. So reduce by 2. So 2 divided by 2 is going to be 1. And 2 divided by 2 is 1. So I'm left with the square root of 3. But we learned from lesson 1b, we cannot have a square root in the denominator. So we're going to have to rationalize it. So multiply both numerator and denominator by root 3 and this is going to become the square root of 3 over square root of 3 times square root of 3 is going to be the square root of 9 which becomes 3 okay um so my final answers are one half root 3 over 2 for cosine and then my tangent is going to be root 3 over 3 those are my final answers. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to do one last example. I'm going to skip these. These are just practice. I would have done this if we were in class, but um, since this is a recording, I'm just going to do this last example with you guys. Okay. Um, so one more time. We want to first figure out if we have any missing sides. So notice across the 90 degree this is the hypotenuse side and then figure out the angle i have angle f which is over here angle f um so across the angle is the opposite side and then whatever you have left over is the adjacent side that's next to the angle that's not the hypotenuse and again we're gonna have to use the pythagorean theorem so I know my 9 is going to be C because it's the hypotenuse. So A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. So 
So my A, I'm going to go with 7 squared plus B squared is equal to C, which is 9 squared. So 7 squared is 49 plus B squared is equal to 9 squared, which is 81. And then notice here we have the 49 and the 81 on opposite sides. And so you have to figure out whether to add or to subtract. And so, again, because they're on opposite sides, you have to subtract the two numbers. So if we subtract 49 to each side, um, that's going to leave us with a B squared is equal to 32. And then I'm going to have to take the square root of each side. And then you check, well, square root of 32 can be simplified. So what perfect square goes into 32? Um, and my perfect scores again are 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, and so forth. But these are the ones smaller than 32. So I like to start from bottom to top. Um, does 25 go into 32? No. Um, 16 does, however, 16 times 2. So I want to use the biggest possible number that goes into 32. Um, I could use 4, but then if I use 4, that's 4 times 8, and then 8 can still be simplified. So you want to pick the biggest possible number. This is going to be the square root of 16 times the square root of 2. And the square root of 16 is going to become 4. And then there is no square root of 2, so just bring this one down. And then the b squared, square root, cancels the squared, leaves you with a b. So b is equal to 4 times the square root of 2. So now I know that my missing side is going to be 4 times the square root of 2. That's my adjacent side. Okay. Um, so now I need to do my Sokotoa one more time. Sine is so opposite over hypotenuse. So my opposite side is 7. The hypotenuse side is 9. So this is going to be 7 over 9. Notice 7 and 9 um, cannot be simplified because 7 is a prime number. So I'm going to move on now to cosine. Is ka. That's the adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent side is 4 times the square root of 2 over the hypotenuse side, which is 9. And then check again. Can I simplify the 4 and the 9? Well, my factors of 4 are 1, 2, and 4. Um, my factors of 9 are 1, 3, and 9. So they do not have anything in common. I cannot reduce. So that is my final answer for this one. And then for tangent is TOA. So TOA is opposite over adjacent. My opposite side is 7. Adjacent side is 4 root 2. So this is going to be 7 over 4 root 2. And then normally we would simplify here. But. 7 and 4, again, don't have anything in common. 7 is a prime number. So I can't really simplify the fraction, but I still can't have a square root in the denominator. I can have it in the numerator. This is fine. Um, I just can't have it in the denominator. So I have to rationalize the denominator. And I only need to get rid of the root 2. So I'm only going to multiply both top and bottom by the root 2. Um, and so then what that does is, let me zoom in a little bit. What that does is here we would do 7 times square root of 2 in the numerator over. My 4, you have to bring it over. The 4, bring it over. And then this root 2 times root 2. Maybe I should highlight it. Um, this root 2 right here times this root 2 is going to be the square root of 4. But the square root of 4 is 2. So that root 2 times root 2 is going to become 2. So then I'm really multiplying in the denominator 4 times 2. So then I end up with 7 times the square root of 2 over 4 times 2, which is 8. And then I check, can I simplify 7 over 8? Again, 7 is prime and 7 does not go into 8. So I can't do anything else. That is my final answer here. Okay. Um, so again, in the denominator, I cannot have a square root, so I have to multiply both numerator and denominator by the root 2 to rationalize it, and then the square roots go away, and it becomes the whole number 2. 
So then I end up with 4 times 2, which is 8. Okay? All right. That should give you guys enough examples to do the assignment on your own now. Um, so after you finish watching the video, go ahead and start your assignment for 10-1C. Thank you. Have a good day.